Hola Seekers, I am Kim and bienvenidos to a Pick a Card. So this reading here is to help us prep for the month of May by giving us a heads up in regards to the significant changes that will be occurring in this month. Now we know that some changes are out of our control and some are very much in our control. So we will receive information about an inevitable change that will be occurring this month that is out of our hands as well as a change that is very much in our control. So this is a change that we can make happen if we so desire to do so or can alter in some way. We will also take a sneak peek into maybe any significant events that might be occurring in the month of May. So these might be good news, blessings or manifestations that will be coming in. And of course, we will get an overview of the month. So the main themes, the general vibe, or even some lessons that we might be learning in May. So to receive all of this information, we will be using oracle cards as well as el tarot and some key terms, okay? So we have three groups to choose from. The first group is represented by the sunshine card as well as this clear card quartz mixed with green tourmaline crystal and for group two we have the twinkle card along with the rose quartz crystal and for group three we have this aurora card with I actually don't know what this crystal is so we'll just call it the mysterious crystal okay so as always take as much time as necessary pause the video if you need to and whatever crystal or card or combination of crystal or card calls out to you, then that will be your group. And the timestamp for each group is provided in the comment section down below. Okay, so now that you've chosen your group, let's jump into your reading. Let's go! Hola Seekers who chose the, um, what was it? Oh yes, the mix of uh, clear quartz with green tourmaline. So as I connected with the energy of this group, I actually felt so much compassion and I kept envisioning this very bright star and I did actually receive the word above. Um, so I am getting a connection with the stars for this group. If star systems or being a star child resonates with you, I feel like your star family is coming through. And they just want you to know that you are very, very loved. You are so very loved. And they want to remind you that you are divine. And that you are a star of your own. Now, I am being called to the crown chakra. But I know there is another chakra above the crown chakra. I'm not sure if it's called the star chakra or something of the sort. And I feel like that is being highlighted for you guys. It almost feels like a star activation and I don't even know what that means but okay you are being reminded that you are light oftentimes we feel like we need to look above us or search for answers from a higher being how can I explain it you know how when like if you've ever prayed we tend to look up or if we ask for guidance we tend to look up like physically we tilt our head upwards and we ask like the sky for help or for guidance or for a miracle um, but we forget that the divinity lies within us it's inside of us you don't need to look upwards or outside of you to connect to connect with your higher self because you are your higher self and you can never be separated from God, if that resonates with you, or universe, or your guides, or your higher self, because all that resides in you. Um, whew, that was very long. Um, but now I'm going to move into the cards. Yes. So we did receive this one, which is sunshine. The sunshine that shines into my heart is you. But I pulled it alongside this other oracle card from the art oracle deck and these two cards are here to give us an overview of the month as well as some lessons that you might learn in the month of may so we have titian go viral not bacterial a flattered client is a repeat client your personality can be as colorful as your canvas oh and look we have stars here again you guys even though you might not believe it or even though you might not see it yet 
you inspire others. You have such beauty and radiant light to you that warms other people. And I just keep getting like there's this there's this mentality of separation from what you see in others or outside of you versus how you see yourself. It's like with this message, your personality can be as colorful as your canvas. If you guys are creators, a tarot reader, and you give amazing messages, you give amazing readings, and you are praised for your readings, and you see the beauty in your work and what you do and what you create and the messages that you give, but for some reason you don't see the beauty within you. This is reminding you that the creator is as beautiful as the creations themselves. The creations are beautiful because the creator is beautiful. So the beauty that you see is a reflection of you, is what I'm getting. So it's like, take credit. <laughs> take credit for the beauty and the magic that you bring into the world. Take credit for that. With go viral, not bacterial, like, I just sense that in the month of May, you guys are just going to realize how amazing you are. And I feel like it's mostly going to be through something that you do. Like, again, like I mentioned, the creation, work. Um, if it's not in terms to, you know, the arts, it can be just in your workplace. It can just be within your group of friends or in your family. Your presence, you know, how you speak, how you present yourself, that is going to be brought to attention in the month of May in a very positive way. You are, I just feel like you guys feeling good about yourselves. You guys realizing what you bring to the world and seeing how special it is, how magical it is, how beautiful. Because the energy of Titian here feels so free-spirited, but I'm getting like this immense energy of self-love, like truly loving yourself, truly feeling beautiful and magical and divine. And just like, it's an energy of like just feeling yourself, you know? <laughs> Because with this cheetah here, I'm just getting empowerment, confidence, strength. We have a snake here and that talks about transformation, change. I also get it in terms of like sensuality and sexuality. But it's this energy is mostly to do with how you feel in your body, how comfortable you are in your skin, how comfortable you are with change and the changes that your physical body undergoes, right? Our physical body never stays the same, never looks the same. It changes and transforms through times and also transforms through how we feel internally, how we feel about ourselves, how we perceive ourselves and our mentality. And I'm getting like appreciating every stage, every transformation, every change that you go through. So in the month of May, I see you guys not really looking for acceptance from anybody else. Not searching to fit in, not searching to please. This is about allowing yourself to be. Again, I keep getting like feeling yourself, embracing yourself. I do keep getting this energy of like immense compassion, like an embrace, being embraced, but it's like embracing you, embracing all of you. And with the message, a flattered client is a repeat client. <laughs> I just keep visualizing someone who is walking down the street, smiling at everyone who passes by, because you're just acknowledging the beauty that is around you. You see the beauty that is within every person you come in contact with. And it's like, you just want to send your love to them, like sending good vibes to everybody you come in contact with. It's like a very natural high um, kind of energy, very, I wouldn't say zen or peaceful, it just feels good. <laughs> That's what I'm getting, just like it feels good. So yeah, I just, I feel like everything around you in the month of May, like your external reality will look good because you feel good inside. And 
remember that it's our perspective that shifts our experience of something. But I do see confidence here. I see embracing change. I see you embracing yourself and feeling beautifully divine in the month of May. And like I said, it's like you guys are the sunshine. You guys are the ones who are the inspiration to others this month. Okay, but now I'm going to move into the other cards. But before I do, I would like to pull out some keywords just to see what themes this month will be touching. Oh, okay. So we have growth, yes. We have listen, health, and relationship, okay? So I will come back to these as I pull out the other cards. Okay, so these cards here are to let us know what changes will be occurring this month of May. Now we know that some changes are in our control and some are out of our control. So these two cards are here to show us a change that is out of our control. And these two cards are here to let us know about a change that we can make happen if we so desire to do so this month. So I often see these as opportunities that may lead to a positive change or shift in our life. Remember that all of these changes here are for your best interest. They are for your highest good, okay? So for the changes that are out of our control, we have 10 of arrows instruction. And to clarify, we have the 10 of pentacles number eight, the scythe. And for these ones, we have the seven of vessels, which is the seven of cups, along with the extra joker. Okay, so I'm noticing that we have the number 10 repeated here twice. Number 10 is all about endings, conclusions, and I realize that we do have the key term growth here. So in the month of May, an inevitable change that will be occurring is growth, is transformation, as we were talking about here with the snake. Certain cycles are ending for you guys, and these are cycles that have been very difficult for you, that have been burdensome, that have felt quite ener energetically draining for you. This might even be mentally and emotionally draining as well. Because we do have the number eight here, the number eight always reminds me of like a working energy. So if it's the case that you felt like you were being overworked or you felt like you were putting a lot of effort in your work or in your creative endeavors or in your studies, but you weren't seeing any progress, you weren't seeing any financial revenue, acknowledgement, I do see a shift occurring for you guys. It just feels like this phase of struggle, of hardship, of feeling like you're working aimlessly for something is finally ending. So for some of you, this might actually be um, a change in your job situation. This might actually be you deciding to quit a job that is not giving fruit to you or is exploiting you possibly, or it's just not acknowledging your potential, um, what you bring to the table, or it's not letting you shine in your truest potential, in your truest light. And you decide to move away from this situation, from this environment, so that you can give way to a new beginning that will allow you to shine with the sunshine here. So... Again, as I was mentioning before, this is about embracing you, realizing how amazing you are, and in that, you're not allowing anybody to minimize you. Any situation that has caused you to feel like you needed to dim your light, you're ending it. You're cutting away with it. That's what I'm seeing with the sky here. And I feel like with this instruction card, Finally, you guys are listening. We did receive listen here 
to the advice from spirit, to the advice from your higher self, because possibly they have been nudging you to let go of this situation, environment. It might even be a relationship that was not allowing you to progress, that was not allowing you to go. It was keeping you stagnant and stuck. And I finally see you adhering to those messages, to that call to end the situation so that you can enter your more prosperous new beginning. And I feel like this is mostly in terms to like finances, career, or a job situation. Again, like if you feel like you've been overworked or you feel like you have been working too much but not getting any recognition or you feel like you have been putting a lot of effort but you haven't been getting any recognition or you haven't been seeing any fruits um, from your labor, then I see you changing things, moving away from something, deciding to finally end it. But it's not an energy of giving up. So this does not signify that you guys are quitters. This just signifies that you're seeing the situation for what it, what it is and realizing that you guys deserve better. You guys deserve more. You guys deserve to be seen, to be recognized. You deserve some an environment that allows you to show all of your talents and your skills that allows you to show up in your authenticity without feeling like you need to dim your light or be someone else that's why i feel we have the cheetah here because that is reminding me of courage it takes courage to end something to let go of something but i'm getting such a free-spirited energy here and it's almost like I, i'm getting this um energy of like throwing the papers like throwing them up in the air and being like I'm done like I'm done I'm through with this I'm I'm not dealing with this shit anymore is what I'm getting here and see how we have this kid here with a brand new arrow I see arrows as intentions Arrow is also associated with the element of error, which has to do with the mental realm as well as communication so I see you guys setting a new intention for yourself I see you having a new type of mentality, one of strength, one of courage, one of confidence, one that says, I deserve better. And so with you ending this, with you closing this cycle, you are setting the intention for something that actually meets you eye to eye, for something that is actually of you, for something that is actually of a higher frequency or of a higher pay this may be, or of a higher caliber. So if um, you are self-employed and you feel like your business hasn't been given much to you and again, you feel like you've given it your all, this is an energy of giving it your all. This is knowing that you have tried your very best that you have went from plan A all the way to plan C and none of these have worked. And so you can leave the situation knowing that it's not because you didn't try, but it's just because this wasn't it. And it's not because it wasn't meant for you in a way that you weren't worthy of it, but it's just this thing itself didn't meet you. Like this thing itself was way up here and you were vibing all the way up here. And so the only way that this could have worked is if you brought yourself lower, right? And that, and you know your soul, right? Your guides know that that wouldn't be it. That just doesn't work. Whenever you have to minimize yourself in order to achieve something, in order to be with somebody, in order to keep something working, then you know that it, it isn't it for you, that it just isn't it because it's not allowing you to fully shine. And so now you've decided no more of this. I'm going to shine as bright as I am meant to. And I'm going to allow for whatever matches me to come to me. Or I'm going to find something that matches me at my level. And then we can start working. And then we can start moving forward. Now it's time to accept more. To accept better. Because you deserve it. So... I am seeing change in terms to your work, business, even studies. It may be maybe you were studying a subject that, you know, you were giving it, like I said, giving it all your effort, but, you know, the material wasn't sticking. <laughs> um, 
you didn't feel fulfilled in what you were studying. And it's because, you know, there's something better out there for you. There's something that is more suited for you that will bring more joy to your soul and to your mind. Something that allows you to grow, to expand, expand your mind, expand your soul, um, expand your emotional awareness even. And I feel like with health here, we also have relationships. So I feel like this can fit in terms to relationship, in terms to business or studies. But with health, I also feel like whatever it is that you were in this situation before, it was very detrimental to your health. It could have been your physical health, your mental health, um, your emotional health. And so that's why this needs to end. That's why we need to close this chapter because we can't have that. We can't have you guys feeling bad or we can have this, you know, messing with your health, with your health. We just, mm -mm, non-acceptable. So we're moving out of the situation. We're packing our bags and moving into a nicer location. Okay, so that's the change that I see for you guys. Um, now for a change that is in your control, we have the seven of vessels, which is the seven of cups, along with extra joker. Now I always see the extra joker as my free pass. So this is reminding me of the eight of cups, even though it's the seven of cups. And the eight of cups is about moving away from something for your emotional well-being. Again, I feel like you guys, this is just about having the opportunity to move away from that which you know no longer serves you, which you know is affecting your health in some way. Because with this extra joker, it just feels like a ticket, a ticket to get out of something, a ticket to move into calmer waters, to see better sceneries, to move into a place where you can actually breathe fresh air. I'm just getting, you know, how like um, people usually go to the countryside so they can um, get fresh air, clean air, where there's less stress um, is also what I'm getting. Um, when I see this card, it usually gives me an energy of revisiting the past, of holding on to something that has already ended. And so even though we might move away from something like an environment per se or end a relationship, we can still carry that energy with us if we're still holding on to it emotionally, if we're still emotionally attached to it. And this is about starting to emotionally detach from that. Okay, you guys, so if things look like they have shifted around, that's because I have already completed your reading, but I really felt the need to come back and reinterpret these two cards. Because after I gave the example of going to the countryside to breathe fresh air, I just thought how that's the usual simple solution that people give when someone is going through a hard time. And it can be so invalidating, is that the correct term? Of one's like inner turmoil, of one's struggle, of one's pain, I feel. So... In the last interpretation, I went on explaining how it does not do so well to dwell on the past. And even though it's okay to mourn what is already ended or is gone, it's best not to invest so much energy in that. And then I realized that I sounded like a broken record because that's usually what we always hear. <laughs> like, forgive and forget or just let go of the past and... Even though there's some truth to that, at times it's not very helpful. So with this extra joker card, I feel spirit is telling you, you know what? If you need to grieve and if you need to mourn for whatever has ended, then go ahead and do so. You have every right and it's okay to take as much time as you need to. And I feel like it's especially okay to grieve even when you feel like you have moved on. So, you know, there, there's those moments in which we feel like we're moving forward. And then all of a sudden, we think back on the past. And then we feel that sadness again, or that grief, or the pain, or the fear, whatever it may be. And when we feel that, we tend to think that we've not progressed, <laughs> that we haven't let go. That instead of moving forward, that we've taken like a step back. But 
no, that's not the case, you know, like things resurface every now and then. And when it does, it's okay again to feel into it. It doesn't mean that you're you're regressing in any way. It's just part of that healing process. It's part of that transition. So if you're like this, it's like a free pass from spirit <laughs> letting you know, hey, it's okay to feel into your emotions. It's perfectly okay. You don't have to put a strong face for anybody. Feeling what you feel doesn't make you weak. And with this morning card, I also feel like you're being let known that if you feel anxious about this change or this ending that's coming in, please do not feel that because you feel anxious or fearful, that's a sign that you made the wrong choice in choosing to walk away from this thing that was not good for you. Because it's natural to feel a little bit anxious um, when we are embarking on a new journey. Because we're coming out of our comfort zone. And I know when we say comfort zone, we usually feel like a, like our comfort zone is something where we feel safe and secure. But that's not always the case. We may establish a comfort zone out of something that we might not have felt so safe in. But it becomes a comfort zone because it's something that we've become used to. And so when we detach from that, from that which we are used to, then we become anxious because now we don't know what to expect. So I feel like it's it's better for you to just sit down and see where these feelings or thoughts are coming from instead of just like labeling them right off the bat or feeling like they are a, an indicator that you did something wrong or this was a bad decision or that you should go back to something that wasn't working out for you in the first place or was detrimental to your health in some way. And if this is a situation where you cannot physically detach from that or like sever with it, because I know like sometimes it might be a relationship with our family members and maybe it's the case that they're going through something at this moment, you know, that doesn't allow them to be in their best selves at this moment. And I feel like we shouldn't judge them for that because we all go through different phases and we go, all go through those dark moments. Um, so if that is what is happening at this moment, this is just about just keep being pulled to the skull. Just remember who you are. Remember who you are. Keep shining your light. Don't let something external from you minimize you. Don't let yourself be carried away from something that is not of you. Don't get trapped in someone else's worlds or viewpoints or perspectives. Keep your head up high keep looking at the stars remember that you yourself are a star and whenever you need the light you can always look within because it will always be there your inner light your inner guidance and if you need space give yourself that space create that space for yourself by going within by remembering who you are you are light okay you are divine you are sunshine so even though your external reality may change, your internal reality is always up to you. It's always up to you. That will always be in your control. So take as much time as you need, but don't let yourself stay stuck somewhere that you know is not benefiting you in any way because all that spirit wants you to know is that you deserve better. You are deserving of love. You are deserving of so much more. Okay, so the last cards are here to show us a blessing, good news, or something you can look towards to in the month of May. So we have the Two of Pentacles, number 18, and we have Good Fortune. Okay, so we were talking about endings in terms to like job situation, business or in terms of like studies or something of the sort and then we do have the two of pentacles here which often represents partnerships but in terms to like profession collaborations and such this can also um, denote an energy of juggling 
like juggling two jobs because you know finances are not looking so good um juggling many responsibilities so if that was the case before or the energy you are currently in i do see a shift right because there is endings here so Again, we have the number eight showing up here with the number one. So I see new beginnings in terms to work, finances, business, creative endeavors, even studies. So whatever it is that you're actively working on, that will be changing. And we have good fortune here. So I'm seeing success. I'm seeing blessings. I'm seeing a shift in terms to like your finances. So if this is a creative endeavor and what you were aiming for was to gain some form of acknowledgement or recognition for your work, then I see you receiving that recognition. I think I see things shifting for you. And again, I feel like it's it comes after you decide to let go of whatever wasn't working. Or it's when you decide to create some changes or shifts in what you were doing. Maybe like for example, um let's say you have a YouTube channel and you upload videos in regards to vlogging let's say you vlog but it's not going so good for you and then you've been interested in tarot but you've only considered doing tarot readings but you never actually like have tried it out maybe the idea has just been there in your in the back of your mind like hmm, maybe i should try giving tarot readings or doing general pick a cards and then finally you decide to upload in your channel um a pick a card reading and then you all of a sudden you get like more views than you usually do people are engaging with your videos more than they once did you're getting new subscribers and you realize like hey when i did this general reading i don't feel like i had to work very hard for it i just did it and i enjoyed it and it came easy to me whereas the vlogging you know i found myself very drained after i did a vlogging or after i edited the videos and i felt like I didn't receive much back from it. So this is about you doing something and it's with the good fortune, it's sort of like you don't have to put that much work in it. Of course, you do have to put some degree of work, but it doesn't have to be so strenuous as we had with these two um, cards here. It's not so overwhelming or burdensome to you. Um, with this two of pentacles, maybe it's the case that you're still kind of holding on to your old thing, but you're also allowing yourself to try this new thing. And when you try this new thing and you see that it's going better for you, I feel that that's when you will gain more confidence to finally let go of this old thing. Because I still see some hesitancy here. So I feel like maybe you guys need some assurance, you know, um, some security that the new thing that you will be embarking in will give back to you in some way and so i feel like spirit is coming through here to let you know like yes it's time to let go of this old because it's just not working out for you and there's something better out there for you because you really don't do not need to work yourself to the bone to gain the recognition that is already yours a star i feel like a star doesn't have to strain themselves to shine bright because that's just natural to them and that's the same with you you don't have to prove yourself to anybody because you are already worth it so the blessings the blessings should come naturally to you again i'm not saying like don't put any like you're not gonna put any work at all because you know everything requires a certain degree of work but this is not about you know beating yourself up over it or feeling so exhausted at the end of the day that you don't have energy for yourself or for anything else. Yeah, so I see um, good fortune in terms to business, finances, new creative endeavors. Again, this might be in terms to studies. Maybe you decide to take a new class or you decide maybe on a new career. I'm getting career here. So, and you realize that this is more fitting with you that this actually you're actually enthusiastic about learning this yeah so i'm gonna end your reading here i hope you enjoyed these messages if they resonated with you then please do leave a like or comment and if you want to stick around for more readings with me kim then please do subscribe i do offer personal readings all the information is in my website so if you're interested then please do visit the link that is provided in the description box okay so yeah thanks for joining me and until the next moment bye bye 
Hello Seekers who chose the Rose Quartz along with the Twinkle card. So I like to begin my readings with an intuitive message and for you guys I kept receiving the message we are here to guide you and I actually felt like someone bought me right on the center of my forehead which I personally associate that specific spot with the third eye chakra. Hmm. I simply feel like your guides, angels, higher self, whoever you resonate with wants to remind you that you're not alone. I feel like they're coming through to comfort you guys because when I began connecting with the energy of this group, I felt like crying and I felt this sense of being lost. So if that is how you are currently feeling at this moment, Spirit just wants to remind you that this is a feeling, this is not an actual fact. And the bop on the forehead is sort of like their way of bringing you back to center or like awakening your soul, asking it to come back to your body. It's sort of like reminding you to remember who you are. Like, I don't know, you guys' energy feels very gentle, very soft, very pure. It's almost like group one. I keep thinking of stars, maybe because we have the word twinkle here, but it's like you're this beautiful little precious star in the night sky surrounded by many other stars, but it's sort of like sometimes you forget. <laughs> You get so caught up in the darkness between the stars that you forget all the light that is around you. And you kind of forget your own light. Sometimes other stars have to come in and like bop you, <laughs> bop you right on the forehead to remind you, hey, we're right here. Don't forget to shine your light. We're right here with you. We'll never let you forget who you are. Our most precious star in the night sky. And these stars, these other stars can be family members, can be loved ones, friends, but I'm mostly sensing it as your spirit team, your spirit guides. Yeah, but now I'm going to move into the cards. Okay, so to receive an overview of the month of May, as well as the overall energy, or some lessons that we'll be learning this month, we have these two cards, which is a twinkle, the brightest flicker is the heartbeat, along with this um, oracle card from the art oracle deck and it's Filippo Marinetti forward march looking backward ensures a broken neck your art should wage war the only constant will always be contradiction I like his mustache um yeah so I'm being I'm being immediately pulled towards this message forward march looking backward ensures a broken neck i feel this month of may is all about moving forward um see how we have this bridge here in this image a bridge is like an opportunity for a new beginning so um i just heard the message things will change things will better so keep marching on this month of may it's not a time to reminisce about the past or look back on what could have been or what should have been because that's already an old chapter it's like i don't know it feels like you guys it's going from one place literally <laughs> moving to complete new other place and these two have nothing to do with each other like the only thing that connects both of them is you you're the one who's moving from point a to point b you're the only connection between these two points. Other than that, they have nothing to do with each other. So it's almost like I keep getting this visual of like literally somebody walking on this bridge and you're being told, don't look back, just look forward. Look towards what you want, look towards your new future. I just heard a bunch of sirens and sirens always remind me of like Archangel Michael or of protection. Just know that you guys, you guys are protecting protected you are you're being led to something better to safer lands i'm getting like don't don't resist the change because the resisting the change is like refusing to walk to the other side of this bridge and with the message the only constant will always be con contradiction 
what I'm getting from this is the only constant will always be change. Even for group one, there's like this big energy of change coming through. Like I feel this is the season of endings to welcome in the beginnings, to welcome in our new chapters, our new journeys. So sometimes we might get caught up in our heads um, thinking about or worrying about um, what is waiting for us or worrying about the unexpected or the unknown. But with this message here, it's like whenever that happens, just anchor into your heart space, center into that loving space, into your intuition and le let that guide you. Because that light will guide you forward. It will remind you that there is no need to fear. As I mentioned with the intuitive message, you guys are not alone. You guys are being looked after by the divine, by spirit, by angels if you resonate with that. And so you can ask for their support. You, you can ask them to let you know that you are safe and supported. And they will. It will either come through a feeling by the fear or the anxiety being lifted or if you're more of a visual person there might be some symbols um, or signs that you associate with safety so you can ask to receive those whenever you need that reassurance and it will be given to you because i do feel like the month of may is <laughs> a month of change and i know that can be scary for some of us and i know that sometimes we need that reassurance so it's okay to ask for it because I feel like this change is part of your journey. It's simply leading you to the next stage of your journey or the next chapter of your life, of your story. I'm sorry if you hear squawking. <laughs> My neighbors have a macaw and that's, that's them singing. Um, okay, but now I'm going to move into the other cards just to get a little bit more information. Um, oh, but before I do, let me pull out some key terms. This will give us clues about the main themes of this month. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I had to pause the video because our friend the McCall over here decided to have a big ass solo and he just went at it. But okay, so we have growth, validate, there he goes again, and foundation. We have success, commitment, and rest. Okay. So I will get back to this key terms um, as I pull out the cards for you guys. Okay, so these cards here are here to show us what changes will be occurring this month of May. Now we know that some changes are in our control and some are out of our control. So these two cards are here to tell us what changes will be occurring that will be out of our control. And these are here to show us the changes that we can make happen in the month of May if we so desire to do so. Okay, so we have ooh, the Fool, the Wander, um, the Five of Wands, number 33, the Clover. And then we have Ten of Bows, Responsibility, which is the Ten of Wands. Um, and this is the Ten of Cups, number 7, the Bouquet. So I'm noticing that we have a lot of repeated numbers here, 3-3, three, 10-10, three, ten, ten, and we do have the key term validate. And as I was mentioning, if you need that validation, if you need that reassurance, Spirit will give it to you in the month of May. So maybe repeated numbers might be a sign for you, and these might be numbers that you will be seeing in the month of May, just to reassure you that you are on the right path. And I say path because we do have the wanderer here, which is the fool. Um, and I love this image. We have a bridge here again, which we had in the twinkle card. So I am definitely seeing new beginnings for you guys. Now the number zero doesn't necessarily signify a beginning. It's like the energy before the beginning. It's before you even step foot into that new beginning. So I'm seeing an opening for you guys. A door of change is opening for you in the month of May. And that's your inevitable change that is occurring this month for you. It's like a door of opportunity. Now, the wanderer or the fool is a very free-spirited energy. 
is one that is inventive, ingenuitive, one that doesn't see limitations. It carries this like childlike wonder to them. So I'm actually seeing like, you guys cannot resist stepping into this new beginning because your soul is automatically being pulled towards it. It's like you've walked, all that you have walked thus far to get to this bridge over here. To open this door of opportunity for yourself. It's like a portal I'm seeing it as. Especially with this clover here. See what it says? The clover leaf is a bearer of good tidings. So we know that when we find the four leaf clover, it's like good luck, right? It's like a one in a million or billion um, chance of finding a four leaf clover. And you guys, you guys have found it. You guys will be finding it in the month of May. This can even be like you guys finding yourself in the right place at the right time. It's sort of like, this is a silly example, but let's say you've always wanted to meet who is very popular, let's see, um, Jin from BTS, <laughs> and then all of a sudden your parents or your roommate or your partner tells you that they want a specific food from a specific place and they ask you to go get it and you're whining and complaining the whole drive through, but finally you get to that place and lo and behold, Jin from BTS is there <laughs> and you get to meet them and it's like one in a billion chances that you would ever find Jin at this place. It's like one thing leads to another, but it's leading you somewhere. It's leading you to where you've been wanting to land is what I'm getting. Now, the number three is a number of manifestations and creativity. It's about creation. And it reminds me also of the connection between the mind, the body, and the spirit. So it's like alignment. I'm seeing things aligning for you guys. And even though you might complain about the changes that are happening, it's like all for a reason. And like the only reason you're going along with it is because your higher self and your soul knows that all of these are actually doors of opportunity opening for you. It's like sort of like a shortcut to get you faster to your manifestation, what you've been wanting, what you've been wishing for. Or again, it could just be generally leading you towards a new beginning that is more favorable to you, that is more in alignment with what you want for yourself. And I mentioned the energy of complaining and whining because we have the Five of Wands here. The Five of Wands usually represents like turmoil, um, conflict, arguments, disagreements, or competition. Um, but I feel like this is more of, of your energy, <laughs> like you begrudging something because you don't want to do it or something is not going according to your plans. And so you might feel like the universe is against you, but it's actually the universe is working for you in this situation. Because the number zero is an energy of infinite potentials. And I'm getting it more like you guys don't know what's waiting for you. This is like an energy of magic. Anything can happen. Anything is possible. So like, what you may feel to be a shitty day may turn out to be like the best day ever. So it's like, keep yourself open to the possibilities in the month of May. Because I feel like a magical portal is opening for you guys this month and anything can happen. You can hit the jackpot at any moment. And so it's recommended not to resist the change. Especially if you get like a nudge, if you get inspired to do something, to go somewhere, and it's a good feeling, follow that. Don't hesitate to follow that. Because I feel like you guys are being led to success, whatever success may be for you. This might be like success in terms to business, in terms to career, but it might be success in like finding your four leaf clover, meeting someone that you always wanted to meet, getting to see a beautiful scenery, 
or something that you might consider a miracle or something magical. This might even be you finally receiving the sign that you have been looking for because we do have validate here. So I am seeing also growth for you guys. Again, I feel like this can be like a surprise, but it also feels like there's like two energies here. You getting a little surprise from the universe, but it's going to be like the way you get that surprise is going to be funny because like I mentioned, you might be complaining the whole way through, but at the end, you will be very pleased. Um, and the other energy is like generally, I feel there is this change coming in and like this blessing this little gift that the universe is presenting to you it's just like a little sample of the many blessings that are coming in for you through this general change or this overall change because i am seeing growth here and i'm seeing foundations so with foundations i'm seeing setting a foundation for new beginnings Especially with commitment here. I feel like, again, like I, like I mentioned, it feels like literally you moving from one place to the other. It might be like a physical place, but I also feel like just energetically. It might even be like your mental space. And whatever this new place that you're entering, it requires of your full attention. It requires of your full commitment. Because like I said, this new place, this new beginning has nothing to do with the old. It's like experiencing a new lifestyle completely. And it requires of your full commitment and attention in order to experience all the many blessings that this new lifestyle has to offer. And so it's like, don't go back to old ways. Don't go back to old routines that you know we're not working for you because the wanderer is all about that it's the energy of zero it's like stripping yourself away from everything you knew so that you can it's sort of like a rebirth energy a clean slate here it's like allow yourself to be that clean slate and commit yourself to your future to your new beginnings because that is where the growth is that that is where you will be laying your new foundations I also feel like this Five of Wands with the Fool is reminding you don't get caught up in old arguments or in old resentments. Again, that's part of the past. Like, ugh, we don't we don't need that. We don't need that energy. We don't. You don't need to carry it into your beautiful new beginning. Because again, your new beginning has nothing to do with that old energy. Let that let that remain here on this side of the bridge, and let this other side of the bridge present you with new things, with beautiful new things, with more harmonious new things. Yeah, but now I'm moving into a change that you can make happen this month. We have 10 of wands and 10 of cups. Again, the energy of the 10 is all about endings, conclusions. So as I mentioned, you're like tying loose ends and closing old books and dusting yourself off ready to embark on a new journey with the ten of wands this is an energy of like being burnt out having a lot on your plate of things being difficult as i mentioned with the five of wands if there's a possibility to disengage from something like if there's a possibility to end the cycle that you know was this ten of wands energy this ten of bows energy that just drained you energetically. That is like the same old, same old. Same arguments, same conflicts, same gossip. Then please do walk away from it because what is waiting for you is this Ten of Cups energy. So it's like you guys can engage in this Ten of Wands energy or you can choose to engage with this Ten of Cups energy. And the Ten of Cups is your wish fulfillments and more. It's emotional fulfillment. It's being content, feeling joyful, feeling abundant in your relationships with other and in your relationships with self. So again, if there are certain relationships that you know are not in alignment with you, that no longer resonate with you, it's okay to let go of them. And I don't know, I keep thinking relationships, but it almost feels like these relationships are not very like close 
You know, you know when you have acquaintances or people that you sometimes talk with or it feels like someone who reaches out to you only when there's something to gossip about or only when they find themselves in a sticky situation, then possibly they come to you with their problems and use you as like a emotional dumpster. Like they just come to you to dump their emotional baggage on you is what I'm getting with this 10 of wands. So if you feel like you have those type of relationships or connections, again, like you don't you don't have to stick around or you don't have to hold that or or take that with you in your new beginnings because again, like you can choose who you want to engage with and you can choose who you want to who you want to make space for. Especially if you guys are not in the best conditions to be, you know, absorbing other people's heavy energy. That's also like placing your boundaries and respecting yourself. If you already have a lot on your plate, it is not your responsibility to take on other people's problems or burdens. We just want you to know that it's not your responsibility. Whether you want to or not, it's always up to you because you have free will and that is always respected. But again, we just want you to know that it's not your responsibility to be solving other people's problems or to be carrying on other people's problems and then making them your own. So again, this is about you choosing what you want to carry with you. What energy do you want to carry with you on this new beginning? And whether you want this journey towards your new beginning to be like a strenuous one or you want it to be a more chill and relaxed and comfortable one? Do you want to smell the roses along the way or do you want to be sweating bullets along the way? Because this, remember, this is an energy of being free, of letting go of everything that was weighing you down. Yeah, with commitment, it's like, what are you committing to? Do you believe in what you're committing to? Enough to continue committing. If I, to if I told you you're about to embark, let's say, this is an example. If I told you you're about to embark in a new chapter, you know, this is a new journey, a new path, and this path is going to take 10 years to travel. It's just an example. It's going to take 10 years to travel. What are you going to take with you? What, what are you deciding to commit to for another 10 years? <laughs> That's a question for you. So whatever you're committed to right now, are you willing to commit to it for another 10 years? Are you, really, are you willing to continue this pattern, this cycle for another 10 years? If even thinking about it makes you shiver and tremble, then you know that something here needs to change. Something here needs to be let go of. Um, with rest, I also feel like give yourself also, create space for you to rest. Give yourself that space. Give your body that opportunity to rest from time to time. And also like I'm getting like rest from social media <laughs> um, because if you guys tend to feel like energetically drained or even emotionally drained by after you like have a conversation with somebody or after you go out and there's a lot of people then I feel like you guys might easily absorb the energy of others or of your environment or of a space social media internet you can connect with other people's energy by simply looking at a picture by simply hearing somebody's voice because energy doesn't care for distance there's no borders in regards to energy so be mindful of what you're engaging with, who you're engaging with. And notice after you engage with someone or with something, notice if you feel energetically drained. If you do, then that might be a sign that what you're engaging with is taking from you or it's not in alignment with you. So give yourself rest in terms to that as well. So do something that actually brings you peace and calm, actually relaxes you, engages you in some other way that is beneficial to you, that feels fulfilling to you, something that inspires joy in you, that inspires you. Yeah, engage with that which 
stimulates you in a positive way, stimulates productivity, stimulates growth, leads you into this success mentality, rather than having you feel down about yourself, because that, that's, not, that's not helpful in any way. Yeah, and I'm, number seven reminds me again of luck. So this month of May is very lucky and abundant for you guys. Like luck, luck is on your side in the month of May. But it's not so much luck. I also feel like you guys have put in a lot of work already. Whatever it may be, you guys have put in your part. And now it's universe's time to, you know, make their move. Because you, you guys have already made your move in some way. This might be through like a personal healing journey. Or this might be like actually putting in the work in terms to a work situation. In terms to your career, your studies, whatever it may be. Or in terms to your relationship. This might even be you already having set your boundaries in place. You already having having known what is of you and what isn't and stating and stating to the universe what it is that you want and so now that you have done that the universe is like okay then let's bring this ten of cups to them let's bring exactly what they want let's open this door of opportunities for them let's lead them towards the place that they have been yearning to get to um Okay, but now I'm going to look at something that you can look towards to for the month of May. So these might be blessings, manifestations, or good news um, coming in for you guys in this month. And we have the Nine of Wands, number 26, the park. And to clarify, we have abundance. This card fell out in horizontal. And whenever cards fall out in this in this way, I see it as foundations, like where the energy is ground, where the overall energy is grounded on, um, or sometimes I see it as an energy of stagnation. But for this reading, I'm actually seeing it as foundation because we even have the keyword foundation here. So as you can see, I'm not lying, you guys. Here's the card to validate it for you. This month is about abundance. This, my, this month is about you receiving your blessings. You finding your four-leaf clovers. Clovers, plural, not singular. Like I mentioned, I feel like universe will be bestowing a lot of little gifts to you. And it's only to get you motivated about this new change that is happening for you guys. And this new beginning is leading you closer to this abundance. Now, I was already talking about abundance here with the Ten of Cups, um, and I was relating this mostly to like emotional fulfillment, emotional abundance, spiritual even with the Ten of Cups. But with abundance being here in general, this is whatever abundance means to you. So if you have been looking for abundance in terms to your relationships, that's what you're getting. If you've been looking for abundance in terms to your career, that's what you're getting. It's something with the Nine of Wands here. The Nine of Wands is about, it's similar to the Ten of Wands where it's an energy of facing hurdle after hurdle, obstacle after obstacle, but you having pushed through all of that. It's an energy of perseverance, of not giving up. I also feel the Nine of Wands, it can be a bit of a wary energy for the same reason that it has gone through so much. Um, so it's you basically always expecting for the worst. But I'm seeing this mostly as representing your perseverance, representing how much you guys have worked through and worked on and how much you worked in general. So I feel like Spirit is commending you because they realize your struggle. <laughs> they realize all the shit that you have possibly put through and gone through. And so they're coming in with this abundance now. And we do have the park here, and I'm getting that phrase, it's no walk in the park. And I feel like that's the energy that you've experienced before. But now, it will literally be like a walk in the park for you guys. Now, I'm not saying that everything will go like smoothly and it's all rainbows and butterflies. But this chapter feels like a whole lot better than your previous one. So even if you feel like maybe the chapter that you're currently on is not so bad, I still feel like the next chapter that you're about to begin, it's going to be like better, way better. Um, I feel like 
yes, you will work on things, but you won't have to wait so long to reap the rewards from it. If problems do arise, you won't have to struggle so much to find a solution to them. Like things will come easier to you. And I feel like you will find more time to actually rest, to actually feel rested. And this park is also reminding me of like, you know, taking some random turn and then finding this four leaf clover. Now I'm relating this four leaf clover to a manifestation, a blessing, something that will inspire this abundance energy within you. So yeah, I feel like you guys don't, don't know what's in store for you. Again, that message of anything can happen this month is coming through. We do have two and six here. Um, two is an energy of partnership and union. Six, I see it as an energy of balance. I don't know, but I'm thinking like the yin and yang energy. So, and the message here does say the park foretells a new love. So, if that is something that you guys have been looking for or trying to manifest a new relationship that feels like the Ten of Cups, that feels emotionally fulfilling, then I do feel like that is a possibility. There's a very high possibility for you guys this month, finding your person. And I feel like this meeting is so unexpected, so random. It comes out of the blue. It's almost like you guys... I'm almost imagining somebody who decided to get up that day and like not do their hair, like maybe wear their pajamas out or their sweatpants. Um, and again, I'm getting like somebody being grumpy, complaining and whining, and then you bump into someone and that someone is your person, <laughs> like the person that you have been manifesting. Um, yeah, that's how unexpected it feels like. Your blessing falls in your lap and you're not even ready for it because you're too busy complaining about the day, too busy feeling moody. Um, but yes, I do see blessings for you guys. I see big changes. I see opportunities to let go of that which is no longer serving you, opportunities to really, really begin a new chapter in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it resonated, that it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or comment. Or if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then you can... Then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website. And the link to my website is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for joining. And until the next moment, bye-bye. Hola, seekers who chose this mysterious crystal along with the aurora card so i always like to begin my readings with an intuitive message and mysteriously enough for you guys i actually didn't receive any messages the only visual i did receive was like yellow flowers and after that it was just complete stillness and <laughs> silence it is like i actually experienced the experience you are meant to get out of meditation, which is just like stillness. <laughs> um, so I am sensing like this feeling of utter serenity and peace for you in the month of May, where you are at complete peace, where where you are right now in life. And it's just this feeling of being centered. Yeah, it just it feels very chill, very chill, very nonchalant type of energy. Yeah, okay, but now I'm going to move into the um, cards. So actually, ta-da, two cards fell out for you guys. Um, you're the only ones who received two cards for this group. Actually, no, only one card fell out for you, but I felt the need to pull out another card for you. So here it is, and these cards are here to give us the overall energy of the month of June. What the heck? Uh, the month of May, I mean. And it's actually these three cards that will give us an overview of the month of May, as well as the overall energy or some lessons that you may learn this month, okay? So we have Aurora, before dawn everything was a mystery, and we have happiness. Happiness always comes by accident. And then we have this oracle from the Art Oracle deck, which says, ooh, <laughs> 
Pablo Picasso, if nothing else, be prolific. Choose to have as many styles as you do lovers. Make something worth impersonating. Um, okay, but let's see. So actually, um, this message, choose to have as many styles as you do lovers, along with this card is calling out to me because with Aurora, I'm thinking of like Aurora Borealis, I believe that's how you pronounce it, which is also known as the Northern Nights. And it kind of reminds me of a rainbow because it's all of these colors coming together seamlessly and beautiful to create this magical phenomenon. Um, and so with this message, it's like you guys are not choosing one color. You're allowing yourself to be like the rainbow to be like the northern light. You're allowing yourself to show up in all of your colors. And I'm also getting that in terms to not allowing yourself to just choose one path and then sticking to that path without considering venturing into any other avenues. You're allowing yourself in the month of May to venture out. So if you have more than one skill, more than one talent, more than one interest, you are finding a way to venture and explore all of these. You are accepting all of this as parts of you. And you're not defining yourself in accordance to only one thing. You're not settling, basically, is what I'm getting. Or I'm also seeing like you're taking all of these different things and blending them together to make something of your own. So for example, let's say you love tarot. You love to give tarot readings, but you also love to paint. You also love to draw and you want to pursue both of them. You want to be a tarot reader, but you also want to be a painter or an artist. And maybe you've been struggling between choosing one or the other. But in the month of May, you will realize, hey, wait a minute, why do I have to choose one? Why can't I do both? So then you get the brilliant idea to create your own tarot deck. And then this deck becomes the blend of your two amazing talents because you're um, integrating your knowledge of the tarot plus your knowledge of the arts or your skills in regards to painting and drawing to create something new and beautiful and to create something that is of you. Does that make sense? So don't feel like you have to settle. You were born these, this multi-talented for a reason. It was not to hide your talents. It was to use them, use your skills. And I feel like with happiness here, Happiness always comes by accident. I feel like it's a funny message, but it's like I'm thinking of like cooking again. I don't know why I always think of cooking, but it's like you accidentally pour an ingredient to like a traditional recipe and it's an ingredient that is not part of this traditional recipe. And so then you think, oh fuck, I ruined the whole dish. But then something in you nudges you to taste it. Let's say it's a soup, right? Um, and you taste the soup and holy moly, it tastes wonderful. It doesn't taste anything like the traditional dish, but it doesn't taste bad. It tastes very, very good. And so it's like a happy accident. And then through this happy accident, you realize you start getting inspired to maybe start playing around with the recipes to start adding new ingredients. And from that, you start creating new recipes. You start um, discovering maybe your style cooking, you know, something like that. So it feels like you guys will be discovering something new about yourself or will be discovering a new way to do things or a new way in which you can integrate all of your talents and skills so that you can actually pursue all that interests you. I'm getting inspiration here, being ingenuitive, also letting inspiration come to you because with the, um, when I was connecting with your energy, I did mention that I was feeling like very zen, very chill, very at peace. And I feel like when we're in that zone, that's when we allow ideas to come to us or ideas to flow. So you're not resisting any ideas that are coming to you in, 
me. You're going with the flow is what I'm getting. That's why we get happy accidents here. Because you're going with what is happening. You're allowing yourself to let things unfold for you and see what good can come out, out of this. Or what new doors these accidents can open up for you. And um, with this message, before dawn, everything was a mystery. If you've been conflicted about what career path to take or what you should do um, or what you should focus on, I feel like all of this will be revealed to you in the month of May. I feel like gradually, slowly, it will start sinking in um, how to go about the situation how to integrate all of this to build your own path because it feels like you guys will be creating your own path yeah Ooh, exciting exciting energy here okay but now i'm going to move into the other cards oh but before oh my god i always forget but before i do let me pull out some key terms um these are to give us the main themes of the month of may so what will be the main things of the month? The main for group three. Okay. So we have beginning, union, romance, transform, tower, and create. Okay, so we'll keep this over here and I will refer back to them as I look at the other after I look at the other cards, okay? So these cards here are to let us know what changes will be occurring in the month of May. Now, we know that some changes are in our control and some are out of our control. So these two cards are to let us know about a change that will be out of our control. And these two cards are to give us information about a change that we can make happen if we so desire to do so. Okay, so we have the wheel. Um, and the King of Cups, hand, what is it? Hand in Hand, number 24. And then we have the Queen of Stones, which is the Queen of Pentacles, um, in reverse. And we do have the King of Wands, number 50, the Bear. Okay, interesting. Now let me move these up here. So the wheel is actually the Wheel of Fortune in the Rider Waits Tarot. <laughs> and... The Wheel of Fortune usually talks about fate and destiny. And it's funny that the wheel is here because it's in the aspect of a reading that lets us know the changes that are out of our control. So with the King of Cups here, the King of Cups denotes somebody who is emotionally mature, someone who is intuitive, compassionate. I usually see the King a cups as someone who has their mind in the right place, their heart open, and has their mind and heart connected to each other. So they don't allow their logic to overrule them and they don't allow their emotions to take over. They have a nice balance between both. And I feel like this is actually representing someone. Someone who is going to come in to your life in the month of May. And if this person is already in your life, because I feel like for some of you that might be the case, then your connection will strengthen in the month of May. That's what I'm seeing here with hand in hand. I'm, it's almost like you guys will actually form a bond in the month of May. So the inevitable part, the change that is out of your control, is this person coming into your life. It's the fact that you will form some type of relationship, bond, or connection with this person. That is inevitable because I feel like this meeting, this connection is predestined or pre-planned. So meaning your souls, your souls before incarnating in this lifetime agreed to meet each other in this lifetime. To form some type of connection or bond in this lifetime. And you gave each other a designated time and a designated place to form this connection or to meet. And I'm seeing 24 and it's calling out to me. So maybe the 24th might be a significant day. If not, the 2nd or the 4th or the 6th might be significant for you guys. Or even the 10th because we do have the 10th here. And 
I feel like, yes, you will be meeting this person in the month of May if you haven't already, or you will be getting to form a deeper connection with them in the month of May. But with it, this being the number 10, I also feel like October is very significant. So it's either maybe this is your birth month or the birth month of this other person, and that might serve as validation and confirmation for you guys. But I also feel like in October, something... Something very important will be happening in terms to your connection. Um, it feels like a transformative change. So this might be the involvement of your connection, might be like your relationship dynamic changing in a way. Hmm. Or it almost, I am getting like your agreement. Your agreement will come into play. And if it's not in October, it might be like near October, the month of October, it just feels like it's not necessarily in May where things will come into play. May is more like your meeting, your connection being formed. Does, does that make sense? Because with this image, we have the moon here and then we have the sun. And the sun I associate with masculine energy and the moon with feminine energy. Um, so I'm seeing a beautiful balance here, but I'm also seeing like two worlds colliding, a merge happening here. This is more of the meeting. <laughs> this is more of the integration. And that is, I feel, what is basically happening um, in the month of May. But the reason for why you two needed to come together will not be revealed until after or will not come into play until after. Because we do have romance, this might be a romantic relationship. Um, and I'm, I am getting, I am getting romance, I'm getting a romantic relationship, but if that is not the case, because I know that some of you might already be in a happy, committed relationship with another person, that is not this King of Cups, so, um, if you find that to be your case, then this might be a partnership. So someone you will collaborate with in some way, someone that you do will do some type of negotiation with, um... Or it can be, a, it can definitely be like a platonic relationship, but I do feel strongly that you guys will work together on something big because we do have the wheel here. And if you guys decided to meet, there's a, there's a big reason for why you two decided to meet in this lifetime. And it's almost like I mentioned before, like you guys are super talented. You, you're multi-talented, I feel. So maybe this person will help you find a way to be able to express all of your many talents. And the King of Cups is also someone who is very creative, but I also feel like they're very good in terms to business, in terms to networking, because the King of Cups can be very charming. They're very, very centered. Like I said, they don't let their emotions get away with them but they also don't ignore them i feel like they do business from the heart which i feel it's like very rare but they don't just do things for money or for success or for fame or for recognition if they're starting a project it's because there's a deeper purpose there's a deeper reason for it this is the king of cubs but i feel like they they're very well off and they, they want to start various projects, but it feels like for a cause, there's a, a reason for these projects. Um, um, they're coming off as a philanthropist. So again, if there's something that interests you at this moment, then you know that that might be one of the reasons why you will be connecting with this person. What you will be working on is unknown until until it comes into play. And even if this is a romantic um, suitor, a romantic relationship, I still feel like you guys were meant to come into union or come together because you both work so beautifully together. And it's like, this is not just a romantic relationship. This is a partnership. See, like these hands holding. <laughs> it, this is a partnership. This is commitment. This is you two create deciding coming in oh my god I did, we have union here but what, what am i i'm not paying attention union is here romance is here i've been talking about creating something and we have creation here we have beginning we have transform yeah this this is this is just not like 
a romantic fling here. This is a union. A union of two souls who are committed to work on their relationship, but not only that, are committed to work on, on a project together. They came into union for a reason. For a getting like for a bigger purpose, whatever, <laughs> whatever that may be. And I feel like it's also to help transform each other in a very deep and significant way. Because the wheel is also about transformation. It's also about conclusions, like definite conclusions and endings. So I personally don't very much relate or connect with karmic cycles, but I know a lot of you do. So if you feel like you've been in a karmic cycle i i see this it's representing that this karmic cycle is ending and you're finally entering a fresh slate a new beginning um and this relationship comes like a tower yeah it is the tower so you guys will transform each other not only when you guys meet but as your relationship progresses as your connection strengthens you will continue to transform and transform each other and deep meaningful ways i'm getting almost like the onion peeling like you will peel layers and layers off each other layers of false identities false beliefs false perceptions in order to arrive at the core of you and i see like also in order to reach this inner balance inner union because this is not only union like externally between two people this is reaching union within this is merging your feminine energy with your masculine energy so what is inevitable is this union it's this meeting it's this person coming into your life and you coming into this person's life this is an agreement you made before incarnating in this lifetime um now we do have here um the queen of stones in reverse for a change that is in your control now the queen of stones like the king here is describing a person it's describing someone i feel this is actually describing your energy um so the queen of stones is the queen of pentacles and this is someone who can be very determined if it comes down to it and it's like someone, I feel like someone who looks very soft, very sweet on the outside. And because of that, because of the innocence that they give, because of the innocent vibe that they give off, um, you might never su suspect the strength <laughs> that lies within them. Just like a bear, you know, like sometimes bear, they look like very cozy and fluffy. Um... But when they stand on their two feet, it's like, holy sh get out of the way, run for it. And so all I'm getting is that you guys are extremely strong. And it's mostly, you're emotionally strong, you're emotionally resilient. And with this Queen of Stones, it's an energy that can be very patient or waits for the right time. I feel like the bear often comes off as like a lazy creature, <laughs> but it's not that they're lazy. It's just that they know how to s invest their energy. You guys just know how to invest your energy. You know what's good for you and you know what isn't because I usually see the bear as someone who is highly intuitive and you guys are naturally intuitive. And it's funny because we have <laughs> bears here showing up twice. But we have this one in reverse. So I feel like you guys can be very stubborn at times. Um, like I mentioned, you guys are highly intuitive. But it might be the case that you don't often believe what comes through for you. You might often suspect your own intuition. And because of that, maybe you don't allow yourself to jump into certain opportunities. Because we do have this bear who is coming out of the cave. And I'm seeing this as like waking up from hibernation. Seeing the bear looking out into the horizon, it feels like the something has caught the bear's eye. And because of that, they are now willing to leave the cave. And so possibly some of you have been in hermit mode. And because you've been in hermit mode for quite a while, it might have become your comfort zone. <laughs> and because of that, you might have... A, a fear of venturing out 
And I actually feel like a lot of you guys already feel that a change is afoot, that something is coming, <laughs> that somebody is on their way, or there's a huge shift happening. You already feel it. Because remember, you guys are highly intuitive. So you're already picking up on that energy. And maybe, even, like, I feel like some of you might even know what is coming or who is coming because with the King of Cups being here, with two bears being here, with the Wheel of Fortune being here, some of you might actually, like, already have picked up on this person's energy, might have actually already dreamt this person, or might be in some telepathic communication with this person here, with this individual. You might have already gotten some insight on what this connection is about or what this change is about you might be like up at night doubting that you're ready for this change but if it's coming it's because you guys are ready you are ready to receive your blessings you are ready to embark on your journey you are ready to transform now we do have the king of wands here which i don't know why they show him up with a sword it always confuses me i think it's the king of swords but it's the king of wands and the king of wands is a passionate energy it's a, someone who's a leader someone who is a go-getter someone when they see what they want they don't hesitate to go towards it to claim it as their own sometimes the king of wands can come off as a bit arrogant because they're that confident in themselves and this is the energy you're being asked to enter because the bear can often represent humility. But you guys are, you're being too humble. Too humble, almost to the point of minimizing your power, your talents, and your abilities. Because I believe, like I mentioned, I don't just believe you're highly intuitive. You, you guys might be very, very psychic as well. And like I mentioned, you guys are freaking talented. You're multi-talented. Believe in that. And you guys have a big heart. You guys are genuinely kind. And I feel like sometimes your mind doesn't allow you to believe in that because we all get crazy thoughts and we all experience a, an array of emotions at times. And I think you guys focus a lot on that. And you might be highly judgmental sometimes with yourself. You guys are like your harshest critic. And so I feel like the change that you can make happen um, is... How you allow yourself to feel in this situation. You can either be very defensive about this new beginning, about this change. You can resist it. But the more that you do, the more that it will become an uncomfortable situation for you. So you can either resist it or you can start opening yourself up to it. And you doing that will allow this to be a smoother transition. Because I don't feel this being something bad, you guys. But you might get very defensive about it just because it's a change. And possibly it is because this is something that you actually truly wanted and desired. This is something that you know deep in your soul is what you want to walk towards too. And that may scare you a bit. I feel like this is a bit harsh, but it's almost like self-punishment. Like keeping yourself away from your blessings because you feel like you're not deserving of it. If you resonate with that, please know you are deserving of this. this. This is of you. This is for you. And if it's coming in for you, it's because you're ready for it. It's because you're in resonance with this. Open up to it. Don't resist it. Because as I mentioned, that's what it's in your control, whether you are resist it or whether you allow yourself to embrace this change whether you allow yourself to open up to this new beginning. Because like I mentioned, some things, some things are predestined. Some things are part of fate, but not our entire journey is fated, is destined. We have free will. So if the bear is angry, if the bear chooses to be defensive, in its defensiveness or anger, the bear can come up to this tapestry here and tear it down. I don't know, I just gotta like be mindful of this temperament. Um, be mindful of how much that you're actually feeling is what you're actually feeling or is a projection of your fears. And we do have number 50 here. The number five is the number of change, of transition. So I'm seeing what is in your control is whether you allow yourself to transform, to transition, to accept this change. A change of allowing yourself to see 
yourself in your own light, your own divinity. Allow yourself to see your power and your greatness and to see that you've always been a match to the beauty that you see in others. To the specifically the, the beauty you see in this person. Okay, so these, uh, these are here to denote what you can look, to, look forward to in the month of May. Um, so these might be blessings, manifestations, or good news. And we have the Nine of Pentacles, the heart. And we have Earth Mother in reverse. So, you guys, the Nine of Pentacles represents independence, financial success, stability, and security. It represents success, whatever success means to you. Usually the Nine of Pentacles, I see it as whatever you have been working to gain success in, you will be achieving. And then we do have the heart here. And we have the heart signifies great joy. So I am definitely seeing a love connection here or at least a very significant um, relationship or connection. connection. And honestly, I already feel like you, you already have a connection with this person and it's a connection from the heart space. It's just in the month of May, it's when it's finally going to be manifested into the 3D and it's going to start evolving into like a physical connection. And I don't mean physical in terms to like getting physical. It just means like you will, you will see it manifested in your physical 3D. Um, and then we do have the Earth Mother here in reverse. Um, the Earth Mother reminds me of Mother Gaia energy. It sort of reminds me of this Queen of Pentacles um, because it's Earth, the element of Earth here. But we do have both of these cards in reverse. Um, so this is also deno this also denotes feminine energy, and I feel like that is that is the struggle here. Like you, like I feel like there's some difficulty in opening up your heart, in trusting in someone or trusting in love in general i feel like that is the tower like the barriers you possibly placed around your heart are finally being torn down and i feel like this person here here will help assist greatly in that and tearing down those barriers because here having this card of bright I, with the flowers being represented as the head here, this is someone who has their head full of dreams, full of beautiful ideas, yet thus far they've only been dreams and ideas. Yet being it being in reverse, I feel like these ideas will finally take fruition and from it will come great success, great stability, great security. I also feel like this is reclaiming your power and also your independence. Maybe this is financial independence. Maybe this is just independence in general. You feeling a bit more secure in yourself, more independent. But I'm mostly seeing it as finally connecting more with your heart. And in that, gaining confidence in self. And gaining confidence also through your feminine energy. And I see you connecting more with your feminine energy. Though honestly, I'm still seeing a bit of resistance here. I feel like this is something that will be worked on in the month of May. And this is a beautiful blessing because possibly this is something that you guys have been battling. <laughs> you feel like most of you have been resisting this feminine energy, this vulnerability. Or you have been ve working very hard on it, but there's still something that you can't work through. I feel like there's like something that just won't budge. That won't allow you to fully connect with your heart space, to fully trust in yourself, to fully be confident in self, in your worth, in your value. And um, some of this might be in regards to finances. I don't know. I feel like possibly some of you might be placing your value in terms to your position in the world or like in career or again, like in finances. Like, I feel like there's certain expectations you guys are putting in yourself. And if you don't meet those expectations, then you don't see yourself worthy. At least, at least that's the vibe I'm getting. But man, you guys, you guys have always been this earth mother. You guys have always been the queen of pentacles. That's who you are. You don't need to prove anybody that you are this queen of pentacles. But I feel like some of you feel the need to do so. And if that's the case, this is coming from like possibly 
again an insecurity or from this disconnection with your heart because only your heart knows the truth only your heart holds the truth and if you are not connected with this space then that's why you're not able to hear the truth that's why you're not able to accept the truth that you've always been and i'm getting empress the earth mother is the empress you've always been this empress you are already successful i'm almost sure that you guys have been through a hell of a lot and you're still standing and that deserves a round of applause because like i said i feel you guys are extremely resilient so never underestimate your power and your magic never underestimate your strength because you guys are freaking strong you're really powerful you're beautiful you guys are the personification of beauty your beauty incarnated your feminine energy incarnated <laughs> okay so yeah that's all i have for you guys um i hope you enjoyed this reading i hope it resonated if it did then please leave a like or a comment and if you want to stick around for more readings with me kim then please do subscribe and if you want to stick around for more readings with me kim then please do subscribe i do offer personal readings um, all the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment, bye bye!